Thanks to the supporters of channel member Tristan McDonald. Oh you are absolutely right, Mrs. Wearmouth. Today is the day. If people want a home shirt, whether it be the beautiful home home shirt, the home away shirt, the home third shirt, whichever one they want, today is the last day to order. The link is at the top of the description below. They go off pre-order today, which is the 7th of March, 2021. For anyone who's watching in the future, I know you watching the day they come out, Mrs. Wearmouth, that some people binge watch them much later. They can't get a shirt, unfortunately. But today is the last day. If you don't order by today, there is, I would say, a, a 80, 90% chance they'll never go on sale again. So it's, it's now or never, boys and girls. Hello and welcome to part 53 of Homegrown. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have our first ever Peterborough Derby in the league. Anyway, I think we played them in the cup about four years ago. Our first ever league game against our city rivals, Peterborough, in the championship. We're also away against Sheffield United. Since you were last with me, we are struggling to find our feet a little bit at championship level. We're still hovering around in the top half of the table, which is, I mean, that's fine. If we end up finishing eighth, that's a good season. Uh, but as you can see, we had a uh, we had a four game run where we weren't able to pick up a win, and um, we did play a a friendly against my former club Blackstones. Um, played thirty minutes for them back in the year two thousand, and um, we played a friendly against them during the international break, um, partly to help our fitness and partly to remind the players how to score goals again. And as you can see, Troy Cannon did grab a couple in that game, which was nice. He hasn't scored since though. Thankfully, Tommy Jessup has started scoring again after not scoring since the very first day of the season. Uh, we managed to pick up a draw against Rotherham and then a very, very important win over top of the table, Reading. That was an unexpected result and leaves the league table looking like this. 14 games in, we're exactly where we wanted to be. We're doing far better than we thought we'd be able to. 23 points on the board already. I think if we can we can add another 23, if we can get up to 46 points, we'll definitely be safe this season. 50 is usually the mark that you look for in the championship. Uh, but 46, I think, will probably get us there or thereabouts, especially if we do it in 14 games again. Um, and hopefully we uh, we get the ball rolling on that with a victory over the rivals today. Peterborough, I think they're on our rivals list on the actual club information. They should be. There you go. Fierce rivals. Our fierce local rivalry. Um, obviously, we don't get to play any of these guys anymore. Yaxley, Wisbeach, Stamford, Bourne or Chester, our rivals from the 2019 version of the home series. But posh for the next year or two I think uh, maybe even longer depends how long we're stuck in the championship for and how long they're stuck in the championship for um, but for the next little while we're going to have fierce local rivalry games against Peterborough United and those of you who have watched non-league legend this year will even recognise some of the names from that save are still in this posh side in 2026 Jack Taylor is there Sammy Schmodix is there um, Flynn Clark, who never made it into my team in non to Legend, looks like he's a regular player uh, for them. Ricky J. Jones, what a different career Ricky J. Jones has had in this universe. Um, he's never made it into double figures for a season, never left posh in this universe. 24 goals from 157 appearances. He's probably going to score against us today, though, I would imagine. So they've even got goalie still knocking around. So lots of familiar faces in the Peterborough side. And hopefully they're going to be miserable looking familiar faces by the end of their visit to the home of football. They could all come on their bicycles. We're that close to the Peterborough ground. And this is the team that we're sending out there um, with, our, with all our homegrown boys. It's a shame Danny Pritchard misses out for injury because although he's not from home, he's not a Peterborough boy. I feel like he would want this more than anybody. He, he embodies the spirit of home football club, Danny Pritchard, almost as much as Harrison Davies does. But we do have... A lot of Peterborough-born players in this team. Alex Williams, born in Peterborough. Tom Bachelorette Piteta, born in Peterborough. Harrison Davies, I think, is also born in Peterborough. Oh, he's not. He's born in Wales. How did he end up in Peterborough then? Uh, Nathan Curry, was he born in Peterborough? Born in Peterborough. Kieran Hodgkinson, born in Peterborough. Um, and probably, I would suggest, Troy Cannon as well, born in Peterborough. There's a lot of kids here who would have grown up supporting the team they're playing today. It's going to be exciting. And we are going with Williams in goal, a back four of Bachelorette Piteta, Davies, Charles and Brewerton, Curry and Hodgkinson in midfield, Hamilton and Renan out wide, and Cannon and Jessup up front. 
I want this victory more than I've wanted any victory in quite a long time in any series that I'm managing in FM21. This one would mean a lot to me personally, and it would mean a lot to a lot of these players personally. We need to go out there and beat the posh and uh, just just cross fingers and everything. Let's, let's hope it happens. It looks like they are starting with Ricky J. Jones up front. No sign of Taylor or Smoddix in the team, though, which is interesting. But we all know, anyone who's watched non to Legend this year, which I imagine is most of you, we all know just how dangerous Ricky J. Jones can be. Um, he's obviously not quite the same uh, the same all-conquering version of Jones that we had in non to Legend. He's still Ricky J. Jones, and we do still need to, to keep an eye on him. Harrison Davies with the header that is straight into the hands of the Peterborough goalkeeper. Um, but it looks like we're, uh, we're getting another highlight almost immediately, although it is posh starting things off with a throw-in. Almost by the corner flag, though. So I'm assuming we're winning the ball back. And we do. It's Charles Todgkinson. Plays it for Detroit Cannon. And the local boy, one of the many local boys, opens the scoring. It's home one. Peterborough nil. Troy Cannon, we've got to assume he's a Peterborough fan, has scored against the team he supported as a boy. The romance of it all. Hodgkinson with a stunning assist as well. What a pass from Kieran Hodgkinson. And it is 1-0 to home. And he runs off, patting himself on the head and rubbing his belly in true football manager celebration style. It's how it's how all football fans, how all football players celebrate goals in real life, isn't it? Giving it a bit of this as you're running off. Yeah, that's right. I can do it. That's how talented I am. I might not be able to turn right in my car without accelerating because my hands and feet move together, but my two hands move entirely independently. That's skill. Brewerton now with the throw from the right-hand side. Hamilton's trying to get under it, but the keeper does well. It falls to Hodgkinson, though, who has a very dangerous effort from about 30 yards out, but it goes a little bit high and wide. It was never really testing the goalkeeper. And at halftime, it is home one, Peterborough nil. Very exciting stuff. We don't need to fiddle with this too much at halftime. We just need to keep the passion and the emotion flowing as we go into the second half. Posh have only had two shots in the entire game so far. Nathan Curry now with the in-swinging corner finds Davies and Renan is there. It's a fifth goal of the season for Renan. A second goal of the game for us. And of course, it's our Northern Irish Brazilian who grabs a goal in the first ever Football League Peterborough derby. And um, why wouldn't it be? Renan is just such an important part of this team now. And it is a fifth goal of the season for him. He's going to be a bit special as time goes on. Still only 18 years old, remember. Um, and Tom Batteret Pitet has picked up a knock, which is a shame because he's another one of the Peterborough-born boys, but alas, not able to complete the game. Shay Charles, um, oh, it's just the yellow card thing. I thought it was telling me he'd picked up a knock as well, but he hasn't. So we won't worry too much about that. Brewerton has, um, in fact, it's not a knock. He's just shattered. So we're probably going to take off Brewerton as well. Although I say that and we don't really have a right back on the bench. I guess Nathan Curry could drop out to right back if we um we will do that because we're in defensive mode now so Eli Campbell can come on in midfield and yeah he can play in that role that's fine and then Hodgkinson is probably the other guy who needs to come off if we take off Hodgkinson bring on Mauro Bandera uh, just to, again to shore things up in that midfield we've added added energy in the midfield where we need it most and hopefully we can now hold on to our two goal lead as we enter into the final 15 minutes of this game a historic first Peterborough derby that it's looking like we're going to pick up the victory in which will be just lovely lovely stuff Charles plays it out to Nathan Curry Curry forward to Renan Renan is tiring as well now one of the more tired players on the pitch Bandera beautiful pass forward to Tommy Jessup who puts the cherry atop the icing atop the cake it is 3-0 to home now Tommy Jessup has found his scoring boots again and this is going far better than I hoped it would and it looks like we might even have a record attendance here inside the home of football because it looks packed out all round we've got a capacity of 5,000 and surely for our first ever local derby in the league this, if there was ever going to be a day for us to fill it, it would be today. Um, question marks of offside. They did actually look offside, but we we're not gonna we're not gonna labour that point too much. We're three 0 up against our city rivals, and uh, that's all we really care about at the moment. And with a couple of minutes to go, I don't even think I can mess this up from here. 
and it is going to end with a home victory. It's just, is it going to be three or is it going to be four? Nathan Curry looking to deliver the throw into the area, finds Jessup who comes a little bit short to pick it up. It ends up with Hamilton. Banderas teeing one up and curls it into the far corner and it's 4-0 now and the posh fans are heading for the exits. You can't actually see them doing it, but we know they are. They're heading for the exits. I imagine there's people in their number who live closer to this ground than their normal home ground. But they can, at least they can walk home. They've not got to beat the traffic, have they? They can just walk home. And that is, uh, that's about as well as we could have hoped our first ever local derby to go. And that's the kind of thing when we've been in a little bit of iffy form for a little while, we go and beat the top of the table team, then win our local derby. All of a sudden, we've got back-to-back -back victories. We're in form. We're buoyant. And there's your confirmation. It was a 5,000 capacity sellout. We'd actually done it earlier in the season against Derby as well, but 5,000 people turning up for a sellout against our local rivals. Only 250 Peterborough fans, so 4,750 home fans in the ground today. Earlier in the season, there was 2,000 Derby fans. I think that might be the highest ever attendance of home fans in a league game. I know we've had some probably bigger, bigger turnouts at Wembley for our various appearances there, but I think that's the most home fans we've ever got through the door a home game and they've just seen us win 4-0 against the team they grew up with beautiful couple of changes for the Sheffield United game then Bachelorette and Piteta getting injured in that game he's going to be out for the next month or so with a uh, groin strain Hall comes in for him at left back and Nathan Curry is now poorly he's got the flu um, so Bandera comes into the side uh, to replace Curry um, with Hodgkinson becoming the box-to-box -box midfielder and Bandera taking over playmaker duties. Matty Brewerton, um, who did have to go off in that last game, um, is fit enough to start, though. So he will continue in at right back. Um, Sheffield United are second in the league. This is going to be another big test for us. And we're away from home. So we are we are in good form. We've got back-to-back -back wins, um, one of which was against Reading, who were top of the table at the time. Um, plus, before then, I think we were three games unbeaten. I think we had three consecutive draws. So we are, we've are we kind of stumbled through the back door into a little bit of an unbeaten run. We're hovering just outside the playoffs. This is one of those games where we're going to get a real good idea, I think, of where we might end up being towards the end of the season. I'm assuming we're going to get a beating today and be pushed back down into the mid-table again. But if we can pick up a result here, then it's not outside the realms of possibility that we could end up in a playoff push this year because I think some of our younger players or the majority of our younger players and the majority of them are younger um, are going to get better and better as the season goes on. Someone like Williams. Uh, Williams and Renan are the ones I'm really thinking of and because they've had limited game time previously, um, they are just going to get better and better and better as the season goes on. Um, and you can see from Renan here, he is causing huge problems for Sheffield United down his right-hand side. Hodgkinson from range. Hodgkinson's another one who I would expect to improve. Since since leaving us to go to Fulham, he's barely played any football until he came back on loan to us. So he is uh, he's probably going to get a, a bit of an ability spurt. Um, he's probably in the middle of at the moment. We see him controlling games more and more often from for us from that midfield. And um, they have cut us open quite easily here though. But Williams making another very very good save to deny Sheffield United. We have given away the corner. But some very good goalkeeping again from Williams. Davies pulled out of position. Um, Sheffield United get in behind him, but Williams is there to make the save. And now Hodgkinson heads clear. Um, and Troy Cannon not really alert to the fact that the ball was cleared towards him um, and probably should have got a hold of that to release some of the pressure. But luckily, the ball forward from Sheffield United is hit far too long and the move does kind of peter out. Anyway, I've just noticed Sheffield United do have Douglas Louise in their midfield, who's another... Another player I've had in non-league to legend this year so in that same Peterborough side. Uh, so another example of a player who probably hasn't had quite the same career in this save as he had um, in the one in that game. I know um, Liam Delap is in the same Fulham under-23 side as uh, as Kieran Hodgkinson. And again, not the same kind of player that we've got playing for Arsenal at four o'clock every day at the moment. Um, Hamilton has just put us 1-0 up. While I'm talking about Liam Delap in the other save... Um, we've just had a lovely little move. Jessup's come deep to to help with the build-up of it. Um, it's gone through Hodgkinson and Bandera and then Hamilton pushing forward as the inside forward, like he does so often. And Hamilton, once again, weighing in with a goal. 
Um, Hamilton and Jessup have effectively swapped over here. Jessup dropping deep and drifting out wide. And Hamilton has come in and swapped places with him. And they just haven't tracked his run properly. Hamilton finds himself in loads of space. And we're 1-0 up at half time. This is awesome. And because as, in fact, I was going to say as it stands, we're up into the playoffs. We're not. It seems at this level, you can't stumble your way in the way you can in some of the other leagues. And um, you actually have to play consistently well for a long period of time. But it's a, it's more points on the board. It's more of a step in the right direction as we aim for our target of 50 points that we keep talking about. We're certainly well ahead of the Kev ratio, which is very important stuff. Um, Sheffield United with the ball in midfield again, playing it out onto this right-hand side. Hall needs to stop that cross coming in. He doesn't. But luckily, Brewerton is there to deal with the cross when it does arrive. And it's a big ball forward for Jessup to chase. And uh, he's not getting anywhere near it. It goes all the way back to the Sheffield United goalkeeper and they lump it forward and try and start again. Uh, but Davies playing it forward and it ends up with Hodgkinson in midfield. And now Hamilton running forward again, finds Hall on the overlap. He plays it back into Hamilton, who's been absolutely clattered for a penalty. And Shea Charles has got the opportunity to put us 2-0 up. I don't think Shea Charles is our usual penalty taker. Normally it would be Bachelorette Piteta. Um, but Shea Charles... Gets the opportunity and absolutely fluffs his lines. Um, smashes it really hard, but straight into the post. And it remains 1-0. And hopefully we don't end up ruining a missed opportunity there. Um, I, you know how sometimes it can adversely affect a player when they miss a penalty. I hope we don't see another howler from Shea Charles now off the back of that. Uh, but we are going to make a couple of changes. Freshen things up a little bit going forward. Um, we're going to get Micah Beareth on. Uh, to play as the target man in there. Danny Pritchard is returning to fitness, but I don't think today's the day we throw him on. Um, we're more likely to use him if we're chasing a game rather than trying to defend a lead. He's not the most mobile of chaps. Um, he's just useful for when those we need those late free kick goals um, or corner goals. Whitaker's going to come on for Renan as well. I am, I've got to keep remembering that Renan is only 18 and we do have to be careful about his fitness so that we don't risk breaking him before he uh, before he gets to show us just how good he is. Um, but with 20 minutes to go, we've still got one substitute remaining as well. But it's Sheffield United on the attack once again, down this right-hand side. And they've got in behind Harrison Davies again. And that's happening a little bit too often these days. Um, I don't know if we maybe need to adjust how they're lining up a little bit. Davies, I think, is starting to struggle with the higher defensive line. He's not the quickest getting back to cover. And you just see... Quite regularly, players getting in behind him. Uh, we see it again there. And it might yet be the hour for Danny Pritchard. If Sheffield United score again here, um, we are going to need him to come on and try and grab us a goal from a set piece in the final 10, 15 minutes. So we might do that anyway, actually, and go to the to the old faithful of Pritchard and Beeriff up front. They've not played together up front in a long, long time. But Danny Pritchard, after a little bit of an injury layoff, He's going to get some more championship football under his belt. A 1-1 draw away against Sheffield United. We'll take this every single time, but it does leave us four points outside of those playoffs, which doesn't matter because we're not chasing the playoffs. We're trying to avoid relegation, so it's fine. Um, right, Pritchard has come deep here to act as the target man, doing some hold-up play for us. Pritchard again and knocks it back to Bandera. Bandera looking for Hamilton but can't find him. And now Sheffield United have got the counter-attack on here. And once again, it's Harrison Davies trying to chase back and can't get there. But Williams is once again equal to it. He's got Davies out of jail a couple of times today. And we will take a 1-1 there. Happy with that. Um, it's now, I think, six games undefeated for us in the league. And we're not in a relegation battle. So that's good because I certainly thought... This season would be the season where we would be. But it looks like we might be wiggling our way out of it again. So we're going to go and play another half dozen or so games. Probably get somewhere through to near the halfway point of the season now. We've played 16 games. If we play another seven or eight, um, six, six. Yeah, we'll, somewhere around Christmas, we'll be back. It'll be halfway through the season and hopefully we'll be that bit closer to that 50 point target. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. Don't forget to order your shirts. It is the very, very last day you can order them. And thank you very much for watching.